liberal viewer present. So when the California Commission on the Fair Administration of Justice held hearings last week on the fairness of the death penalty, I didn't expect all the details of more than six hours of hearings to be covered in the local media. When I read the story in my local mcclatchy newspaper, The Sacramento Bee, however, I was surprised to see the article's continuation headline specifically refers to grieving families, though the text of the article only quotes the family member of a murder victim in favor of the death penalty, Barbara Christian, even though Barbara Christian never spoke at the hearing. Even worse, the half-dozen family members of murder victims who did speak at the hearing and were not quoted all spoke out against the death penalty in words that were very quotable. For example, the article could have quoted Amanda and Nick Wilcox, appearing on the seventh anniversary of their daughter's death, to say, The death penalty is frequently justified in the name of victims. We know that our Laura would not want this broken, expensive, and violent practice sought in her name, nor do we want it in our name. Or another very quotable comment came from Andre Heron, a lawyer whose brother was murdered, who explained, I understand that this sense of revenge is a very legitimate emotion, but it is not a legitimate basis for public policy. And I think we denigrate our own noble ideals when we use revenge and we use the public fisc for the, for the purpose of killing our fellow human beings when that really is not going to solve the problem. It's certainly not going to bring back the loved one that people have lost. And I just am amazed that we're still having this conversation in the 21st century, that we just haven't gotten smarter about really addressing the causes of crime instead of trying to uh, treat the symptoms, and that's really what the death penalty represents to me. Or for another mother against the death penalty, the article could have quoted Lorraine Taylor, who, after having her twin sons murdered, still had the empathy to testify. My twin sons would not want any mother to feel the pain that their mother felt. Or, for one last example, the article could have particularly broken down the cliché that victims' families want the harshest penalties by quoting Judy Kerr, who responded to her brother's murder with this anti-death penalty but still tough-on-crime approach. My brother's killer hasn't been apprehended yet, and when I hear that cold case units like the one in Santa Clara County are being closed down for lack of funds, or when I hear that it takes eight months to run forensic evidence in crime labs in Los Angeles County and that there aren't even any forensic labs in some counties. When I hear that, I'm more convinced than ever that the millions currently being spent on the death penalty need to be spent somewhere else. They need to be spent on services that get killers off the street and make us safe. Now, any of these family members of murder victims could have provided a newsworthy quote, and every single one of them testified at the hearing against the death penalty, which leads me to ask, was it fair for the Sacramento Bee article about this hearing to quote a murder victim's mother in favor of the death penalty who did not even attend the hearing, while ignoring all the murder victim's family members who did attend the hearing and testified against the death penalty? And on the bigger question, if these family members of murder victims have the strength of character to get beyond the need to exact revenge through capital punishment, isn't it time the rest of us recognize that this costly, unfairly administered practice should be morally unacceptable in a civilized society? I YouTube, you decide.